um, quick intro. So really this is, this short panel, the idea behind this is to make sure that when someone is visiting, uh, visiting a country that they um another's country that they they don't make any major um major cultural mistakes and that they're you know there's also um on the business side of things maybe some things that are really um really useful to know when it comes to sort of things that are provided mm -hmm. the the type of um you know the type of payment systems and and that kind of um that kind of business um element um for example you know if you're in japan you're it's rude not if someone gives you the business card you have to really study it and um it's rude um it's rude just to stuff it in your wallet and not acknowledge it so that's that's the kind of thing that i think is um is really worth um worth emphasizing here so Kit, I appear to, I don't appear to be in the speaker one on my view. I don't know if it's different on um, on your screen. Um, am I appearing as the panelist or is it Andrea that's um, that's pinned on um, on your one? Um, you're full screen just now, but... Okie dokie, that's good. For some reason I was talking about Andrea was, um, it was focusing on Andrea, so I didn't want to put Andrea on the spot as long as it's not the... It's not happening for anyone else. That's that's good. So, I think the you know to get the the ball rolling. Um, I wanted to uh, bring in um, Anna as a as a manager who's um, who's artist um, who we've just uh, seen in the interval um, has played abroad and has played internationally. I mean, you're. What would your advice be to any Mexican artists coming to um, Scotland or Wales, indeed, just the, the UK in general? Are there any things that you think are really important to, to emphasize? Um, hi, everyone. Um, Ana Rodriguez from Guadalajara, uh, Mexico. Uh, Olaf, well, I definitely think that it's exactly the same as artists coming down to Mexico. Um, I definitely um, think that we have to, as managers or or as the team of any artist that is trying to break through another market, we have to take it really seriously uh, in into the first stage of that uh, strategy, which is learning about the country that you're going to visit, learning about the ground. You know, um, multi mention it. Uh, if you do have a good team. Uh, around you, you reduce the possibilities of bad things happening. And bad things talking um, not only about security and health, but uh, also about um, making your investment really a, a good, a, a good uh, decision, you know? So yeah, I think in, in those terms is the same thing. Um, I do have a lot of experiences where I, didn't do that. Uh, that's why I think I said with with this commitment, um, and it was mostly in Europe. We had at the beginning this weird idea of Europe as something um, maybe like homogeneous, and well, definitely we found out that it was totally different. You know, uh, not not only from country to country, but even from uh, regions and so yeah that's something that definitely I'll keep highlighting for artist offices we do have to to investigate and have there been any things that you learned the hard way um I mean I've heard all sorts of stories like people flying <laughs> to France and thinking it was connected to Scotland but um <laughs> Scotland was part of you know, continental Europe or, you know, the obvious ones which are, you know, if you're playing in Scotland or or Wales, you know, you don't say hello England um, or talk about being in England all the time, which is, you know, perhaps something more that the the Germans and um, Germans are sort of guilty of, but it is, you know, you, you're talking about places that have existed as, um, as countries, um, 
and the, you know, have their own parliaments. So there are those kind of cultural sensitivities, I think, are, are, are an important point. But then I think there's other things which, you know, for Mexicans are far, far easier um, in terms of, you know, the travel where, you know, people would, people moan about going from Edinburgh to Glasgow. Um, but that's like, you know, you get from the centre of Edinburgh to the centre of Glasgow in less time than it would take you to cross half of Mexico City. Um, so I think that those kind of things, you know, on the positive for if you're from Mexico, then you're you're going to find certain things much, much easier in terms of the distances you travel. Um, but are there any things that you think are are difficult or that people have difficulty getting used to if they're playing um, playing in the UK in general? Yeah, I can mention a few uh, that were kind of shocking the first time. Like, uh, for example, renting a band. It was like super expensive, like five times more expensive than in Mexico. You know, um, that was one thing. And it was to get to a festival. So we landed into the airport and we thought it was, it was gonna be so easy to get to the festival because the festival is a massive festival, it's the Glastonbury. So we said like, okay, like there will be signs everywhere. And it was not, and it was crazy. Like crazy because we spent a lot of money and crazy because it took us longer than what we thought. We saw the number of kilometers that we had to travel and it was totally different during it, doing it in the countryside than doing it from Guadalajara to Mexico City. Like for example, those kind of things. Um, we got to the Glastonbury um, early, like really late uh, after the curfew that they gave us. Uh, and it was not as easy as getting around something like that in a Mexican festival. It, you know? The roads are really, that's really worth mentioning because, you know, in large parts of Scotland, we still have what's called a single track road. Um, so if you're coming in a car in the opposite, or they have it in Wales as well, but you're coming in the opposite direction, then there's, there's a whole etiquette to, you know, you pull into your passing space um, and you let the other person through, whoever's closest to the passing space, and you... If you've got, if you're in a big van and you've got a huge queue of um, cars behind you, you have to pull over or people get really pissed off. You know, it's um, there's there's that whole sort of etiquette that that goes with with yeah. driving. You know, and and I think that people generally, I mean, I I have to say, it, you know, sometimes I'm amazed um, in Mexico City just how there aren't millions of accidents because it's it's compared to driving in the uk it's savage it's crazy yeah it's totally <laughs> savage yeah totally completely completely so um what else i could say what's been your experience with you know playing smaller venues and getting fed because you know we've got a terrible reputation in the rest of europe for just you know artists not being fed at, at concerts uh, um you know facilities not really being um the same as they are perhaps in germany or the netherlands or you know places where um there's perhaps public money given to that but i mean is your experience um in the uk well, is it different to mexico in that regard and no it's not like i did some spaces really nice in london um, yeah, a lot, a lot of places like really, really uh, good in technical details and the marketing and like, you know, the venues were, the rich mix was, everything was perfect there. Uh, but I did some other like funky halls uh, around uh, London, Bristol, Liverpool. We even went to a place that a lot of people from the island don't know where it is, that it's called Rotten Stall. Um, and what I was going to mention about that last show, it was, we did play at a piano bar. Um, Trocker is almost a rock band, um, you know, like they stick to the jazz because the structures they use and because they're instrumental, but it's mostly a rock band. And it was amazing. That was one, that was the first time that we discovered that the 
musical background, you know, from, from a place also has a lot to do with what you can expect. Mostly when we are talking about projects that work uh, with fusion or that work with um, not commercial or massive genres, you know? Uh, so, but we, we, the thing is that we figure it out like in the road already, you know? That was not something, it was not something that we worked uh, prior. It was in the road. And were there any sort of experiences that you've had that were particularly bad yeah, learning it, experiences where it, something it was, went horribly wrong and you just, you're like, God, I, I wish I'd known that beforehand. And it was about transport. Yeah, right. it was, yeah, it was transportation. Uh, we decided to, I think it was the day that we did the rich mix in London that we decided to do it in public transportation because we had already uh, loaded all like, like all the backline there, and there was one line that it was closed, and we end up in the other side of the city. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was at yeah. that time. Yeah. I was like I didn't have Uber, you know, like yeah, it was it was crazy, and and so the second time that we went, that uh, that was when we went to the Edinburgh Jazz Festival. We had someone from a PR firm from London, traveling with us within the whole island. You know, there was someone translating everything that we're talking about, you know. And I'm just, you know, something that I'm really curious about with the, um, with uh, the Mexicans that have worked with artists from other countries um, is really just the, are there any, you know, misconceptions? Are there any things that tend to come up again and again where, you know, when people arrive in Mexico that they just get, they get wrong, they get wrong a lot when you're, you know, you're I, dealing with foreign artists? Yeah. I do hear, like, I obviously I've heard a lot of, like, stories. Um, but in the, in the circle that I am, um, it's like no, it it, it it hasn't happened. Like the worst thing that has happened is something about expectations. You know, the band having an expectation about someone or something like a, a festival specifically. Uh, but no, not things like like horror stories. And when I say this, it's because I want to like point out that that's because the people that I am around the people that I know that work with international artists in my country is people that usually attend these kind of events, which is the first filter that I'll put for someone, like for accepting a booking a agency, a tour, whatever, you know, like the first thing I'll, where I will go and ask for recommendations will be in a place like this, you know, and in, in professional events. So, and I think that goes back again to what Mousy was saying. You know, I, cool. like if everyone here will get contacts from everyone else, like that's the first thing that this meeting has given us an added value, you know? Like having someone like from, that you can ask in one text about a reference, you know? So, I mean, in terms of the, you know, is there anyone that's, that's worked in the, you know, and I've opened this up to everyone else, um, but then on the Mexican side, is there anyone that's kind of interviewed artists from abroad or where you've, you've worked with artists from abroad where they just completely got the wrong idea and it's, um, it's, it's led to problems or le led to um, difficult situations um, in, you know, that had to be resolved where, where it could have been avoided. Um, 
I mean, is there yeah. any Chuck? I'm going to pick on you because I, I imagine that you've you've hung out with so many um, so many sort of foreign artists, and and I could imagine that you've probably had some um, situations where you've just been shaking your head with uh, <laughs> of these people have really got the wrong idea. I do. Well, I have some. I have some strange anecdotes but one of the things that actually happened and um, it had to do with uh, uh Ocesa, which is our biggest uh source of entertainment and um, when a lot of new djs and producers started coming into uh because of the amount of money that Ocesa could actually give to djs and stuff like that inadvertently we started some kind of bidding war uh because what most small uh, time producers try to do to outbid Ocesa was to uh bid a lot of money to try to get uh, the artists from Ocesa and that happened with uh that happened during the blockhouse uh, mm -hmm. time when everybody was like MySpace was like a big thing and what happened is I, eventually everybody like talked amongst themselves and uh, tried to come up with decent prices for each and everything. But uh, at the beginning, we, we didn't have that much many, that, that many independent producers for uh, venues and artists and stuff like that. So what happened is most of the small time producers tried to outbid Ocesa uh, to get like the whitest boy alive or Justice or anyone like that. And they started uh, picking up the prices and it was a, a theme for quite some time because most artists said then, like, oh, Mexicans, they pay a lot for blockhouse artists. And that, uh, that I think, set back the industry for a couple of good years. It was like a theme that was something that happened each and every time. But we've been working that out. And that was like a major thing. Mm -hmm. That was like the biggest problem we've had for a bit. And with the artists, I would say I, I do have some really nasty anecdotes, especially because of um, depending on the size of the like, yeah, depending on the size of the production, independent artists sometimes take unnecessary risks when coming over to Mexico, and they should actually research more about specifically about the the police and what they can travel with or they what what they can not travel with. But yeah, Manu, Manu Chao has been detained a couple of times when he's been over, but he is streetwise. So he eventually was able to solve it on his own. Um, yeah. And sometimes we do have some anecdotes, especially with EMI of people eating outside of the hotel, like Manu Chao, this is actually really fun. Manu Chao for some reason told one of the guys, Fidel Nadal from uh, Todos Tus Muertos, which is a hardcore band, he recommended this, uh, like smoothies in the metro and they all tried that and all of them had like explosive diarrhea but that was like that's like kind of, kind of a given so yeah that that's on like make sure you take advice from a new chow on your own risk but other than that it's just uh there is a culture clash and and yeah you do have to make uh you do have to make sure your tummy is uh like Olaf can eat pretty much anything because he's <laughs> used to that. But yeah, you just make sure that you go to, to that don't like, you have to make sure that you've been in Mexico for like a whole month before you try the really risky stuff to eat. And there is a bit of a culture clash and you have to be careful specifically with the police because the police, our police at the time, it's always been a, yeah, it's, it's a complicated relationship with uh, the younger audiences and stuff like that. So you do have to make sure because there is a lot of corruption in, in the police. So you have to make sure that you have at least one insider in, uh, um, in the tour. If you're making a tour, you have to have one people that actually is kind of a street mark to talk with the police, just with the police. And you just have to make sure that you don't talk, don't talk to the police unless you're Manu Chao and you speak fluent Spanish because you can actually get in trouble. So that would be like the one thing I would say. It changes a lot. Sometimes it's really bad. Sometimes it's really not that bad. It changes a lot from, um, from place to place, from venue to venue. 
There are some places where the police are huge nerds. There are some places where they're not. And it has to do a lot with the places that you go to in the whole republic. Uh, you have to remember that we're a big ass country. So it changes from place to place and it changes from scene to scene. And most of the weirder scenes are in places that are could be kind of dangerous. But you have to ask your promoter. You have to get you. You have to get you uh, an insider for most things that you do. And it's actually like a cool thing to do, even if as a Mexican you're going to Europe. So that would be like my one tip: get you somebody that knows your scene mm -hmm. and or the place that you're going to, because that helps out a lot. And I think that's, you know, it's good advice. I mean, both of the, you know, I would say the worst food poisoning I've had in Mexico was actually eating in places that were kind of expensive. And oh, I've never been poisoned eating stuff off the street. Um, yeah. So my, you, you can see in the street, their hygiene levels are much better than they are in the UK, actually. And you don't, you know, in the UK, they put on a fucking glove to then sort of handle your money and your food, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, I went to a local market and ended up throwing up within minutes <laughs> of buying something there because that's what they do. It's never happened to me in Mexico. Um, and, the, you know, you see that there's one person handling money, you, you know, someone else making the food and it's it's fine. So I, I would say from personal experience, avoid those places. I'd say with the police, you know, there is a, you know, if you do, you do, there's different types of police. And if you do have to, you know, that you do have to bribe your way out of it, it's actually easier than in the UK. I'm not encouraging this, but it, it's a diff, totally different mm -hmm. dynamic. And, <laughs> you know, over here, um, you're not, you know, if you try and bribe a cop, you're probably going to end up um, in even bigger trouble than if you, um, mm -hmm. you know, than you already are. Um, and I think that that's, again, it can really vary from, and like anywhere, it can vary from place to place. If you're smoking a joint on the street in London, the police have got better things to do. But if you're doing it in some kind of rural place, then um, where they don't have much on their plate, then you could be you could be in trouble. Mm -hmm. Now, um, thanks for that, Chuck. Uh, Malfi, I see you. You've raised your hand. I mean, what what would you add to this um, to this conversation? No, it's that uh, we. I think Mexico is a really underestimated place. Um, and whenever we, like I do interviews with foreign artists or something, before I explain to them the importance of the territory, it's always like very generic. They're not into the answering. They're not into understanding why the, the, the projects are going to work here. So I think there's a lot of lobbying that the managers also are able to do to make sure that the artists understand that. Because sometimes the, the managers understand the importance of Mexico, but the artists don't. So uh, I would definitely suggest that uh, they explain to the artists. And then as, as something that if you are trying to take a Mexican artist to your territory, it's like the best decision that you'll ever make because we are really very used to sorting out everything. I don't know if you've heard about this, but Mexicans don't know how to say no, but we know how to, we don't know how to fix everything. So uh, it's going to be really easy to work with us uh, and to do, obviously, business-wise, we obviously have limits and of course we know our boundaries and stuff like that, but we really try to work in a teamwork setting. So uh, yeah. it's really easy to work with us. So, so that's, a, a, that's an added bonus to maybe an email might not be answered like straight away or in office hours, or maybe there's like a, an email on Sundays, but uh, apart from that, everything is good. So those two things, like making sure the artist knows the importance of Mexico and uh, the fact that we're really easy to work with in a, in a teamwork environment. And, you know, I think that that's, I've never met an artist that's played, or a DJ for that matter, that's played in Mexico and hasn't had a great time. Um, and I think that it's interesting, you touched on this right at the start about audiences. Um, I once, uh, through a bizarre sort of chain of events, had dinner with the Scorpions, and um, the Scorpions said that the craziest audiences that they'd encountered anywhere in the world were in Mexico and in Scotland. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a, mm -hmm. uh, um, I think there's interesting parallels there. You know, when I lived in London, there was a, 
huge amount of Mexicans and Scots in my neighborhood. And, you know, the generally there was there was a kind of really interesting sort of common dynamic there that people might be really horrible to folk from their own country, but they're really nice to the sort of visitors. And, you know, I've literally walked into a dive bar in Mexico City um, where two guys, drunk guys, were punching each other on the street, like on the ground fighting. And they literally stopped to say hello and welcome us um, before some <laughs> continued to batter each other. Um, so, you know, I think that that's a kind of, you know, it's a measure of what you, you know, you can expect some, you know, of the, the friendliest hospitality in the world. I. It's one place where I would recommend strongly not to ask people for directions because um, you can, um, I've never had someone when I've asked them for directions that just says, I don't know. Um, it's like they'll always, you can ask four people and get four different directions. So mm -hmm. make sure you have a map and, um, or Google Maps. Um, you can get SIM cards there as well now. I mean, it's a lot easier than it used to be for just getting a, a Mexican mobile number and it's worth doing. WhatsApp was pretty much pioneered in Mexico. So, um, you know, again, everyone's on WhatsApp. Um, and I think that that's, um, you know, these are kind of practical things. Um, I want to add one thing, Ola. Yeah, sure. Um, and it's, it's about, customs yeah like the past month we have been having a lot of problems with customs in the airport and mm -hmm. i'm talking from because usually what i knew from other stories it was uh, with traditional bands bands that were carrying like drums made of uh fur or things like that you know um instruments that had seats inside like maracas things like that uh, but right now it's been it's been crazy because there is no like I cannot tell you what you do you have to do you know um, there there was supposedly to be a a um, system you know to so you register your instruments in your country and so when you fly into Mexico you show to the customs that your instruments um, are coming with you as part of your work equipment. But, but last year doing FIMPRO, uh, we had the problem with a DJ, with a band, like it was really hard. And, it, and that is happening in customs in Mexico City. So it's in that airport. That's a really good sort of piece of advice. And I think that the, you know, similarly you can have that coming into the UK, um, especially because I mean, if you're traveling via the US, um, in, guitars are much cheaper in the US. So my dad once brought back a Gibson Les Paul from New York and got absolutely hammered at customs because he thought he could just walk through it. But I mean, those guitars were twice the price in the UK. And um, so, you know, those are things where I think chatting to a booking agent or the promoter and just really getting a sense for that is is a really good idea because it, it could save at you least, a lot of money. Um, at least someone waiting for you, at, uh, someone at the airport knowing that there is a possibility that when you go through customs, there could be a problem, you know? Dill, when you you've had your there. hand up for quite a while there, um, what would what were you going to say? Uh, yeah, oh, thanks, Olaf. I just wanted to um, build on what you said earlier about like uh, like uh, different cultures. That, you know, like it's, if you come to the UK, it's not England and stuff like that. But also for us, and, and it might be for other places in Scotland and Wales and Mexico. Um, like every time a band comes to us, we we give them a crash course and just a few words in Welsh because. Like Welsh is the first language in in where the venue is and our venue in Bethesda, and that might be true in other places. So I mean, it might be a thing in in Mexico as well, because I you know there's I think sixty four indigenous languages in Mexico. I, I don't know if that's relevant to everyone in Mexico, obviously, but but um, 
is it would you know it, it would be useful for people to uh, pick up some language because I mean we had the Arrested Development play uh, last Wednesday in a venue uh, the American hip hop band mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they came on and they the guy just said something like hi in Welsh you know he said simai and just the crowd went crazy you know because it's like it just really? means a lot so I think like I mean that's a tip for all international bands like knowing where you're going you know <laughs> and yeah the, totally yeah and just being respectful and understanding the culture not just of like UK but like you know the the town or the venue Oh, but the same if people go to Mexico that they have the same awareness and you know like respect That's I all think I'm it's saying. a really good point <laughs> and it's you know I've had when I lived in Mexico I had friends visiting me and I was like look just get the absolute basics you know and it'll take you really really far and it does I don't know many countries where you know having that making that effort there's a there's a real culture of sort of day-to-day -day politeness in Mexico as well and I think that you know sometimes to Spaniards it seems over formal but um, I really quite like it and it is that sort of thing of you know when you're going in a shop or if you're going um, you know if you're, you're speaking to someone's mother or something like that you know you encounter somewhere someone in the stair that sort of stuff really, really works um, in your favor if you just get a few things Obviously. down and learn Mexican Spanish because it's different to, and other than the Canaries, the Canaries is kind of similar to Mexican Spanish, but you know, the whole th 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 thing that, that, that doesn't, that makes you stand out and um, yeah. in, not in a good way. Um, it's, it, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, see if you can get uh, someone to teach you some Mexican Spanish, preferably some swearing as well, because they, you know, that, uh, yeah. that goes down yeah, quite you, well too. You can't say you speak Mexican Spanish if you don't swear. Yeah, and it's also something to, you know, Mexicans think that they invented the double entendre, but I had spent a lot of time explaining what carry-on films were when I lived there and, you know, all the kind of... Um, all that kind of humor is, is really similar. Um, so you've got this kind of humor communalities there as well. And, and I think that it's, you know, learn, the language thing is really, it's really, really useful. And, um, you know, the knowing that as well that it's a huge country. So you are actually, yeah. uh, you know, the travel times can be, you know, can literally be days if you're, um, Public transport in Mexico City is great. Loads of Mexico City, middle-class Mexicans don't take the subway, but foreigners do, and it's the best way to get around in Mexico City. And buses are the best buses I've been on in the world. I mean, like, it's kind of like you can book a kind of business class type bus. So if you're traveling light or you're a DJ, that's a that's a really sort of good way to get around as well, because you you can sort of sit in a massive armchair and go and make yourself a cup of tea at the <laughs> back of the bus. Um, yeah, <clears throat> transportation is definitely uh, one, one of the things. Uh, huge, the country is huge. Uh, and there are some routes even that um, they are not, they're not, they're not good. You know, there are some routes that you should avoid. So definitely the help of, a promoter or or even uh, another band, you know? Another band can also tell you about their own circuits around the different regions of the country. Um, and what, what you were saying, it's, it's about culture and definitely uh, local culture can open you a lot of doors, not only with your music, you know? It's uh, if you show, the audience from another country that you are really interested in their culture and that could be swearing in Spanish, you know, that could open you another door. I'm sure it will have a lot more reception than you doing a, a salty video announcing your next gig, you know? <laughs> so definitely culture has like a huge role uh, on this. And I think also be aware of 
the programming cycle, uh, which that information you can get in professional uh, conferences like FIMPRO. I saw in the chat that Enrique Blanc, who is here uh, from FIMPRO, uh, he left there a PDF with the information for, for the music market in, in Mexico. Um, and yeah, yeah, Vive Latino, South by Southwest. You know, sure, you have to think about our, our diaspora there. Sorry. So I was going to come to you in a minute, Chuck, but um, two other things. Um, cold. If you're Mexican, loads of my Mexican friends, they when they come over in winter, it's just hell for them. Um, yeah, sure. It's, it's you know, and it is cold. Uh, it can get really cold. The flip side is if you're in Mexico City, I've been in Mexico City for uh, on about seven or during December on about seven or eight occasions. And every year it gets cold and people are every year they're surprised that it gets cold. And I'm like, yeah, but it, it always does, you know. Um, so, you know, I, I lived in Chuck's house for four months and um, and he, he at least had a little electric heater, which was like a, a saving grace. Yeah. But, you know, lots of places don't have heating. So don't expect to, you know, if you're going to tour, don't expect it to be that warm. Um, it's kind of a bit like- Oh no, that know, idea, really yeah, warm. totally. You're totally right. That idea, it's not, and it doesn't apply for, for the whole country. Yeah. I am, <laughs> yeah. I, Travel four hours and it'll be sweltering hot. So, you know, just check where you're going and check what you, you know, you need to, you need to bring for, for clothing. Um, yeah, program your tours, like <laughs> taking that into account, you know. And if you're coming from Mexico or the UK, you're just going to be cold regardless of when it is, unless you're in London, perhaps, or on the South Coast. But um, it's uh, <laughs> it will it will be cold. So just come come prepared in that way as well. You know, um, Chuck, you you raised your hand, yeah. Yeah, because I wanted to. There's something that you have to um, take into account too. We have fan bases for most everything. So uh, make sure you stay, in, you said about like learning some uh, Spanish words. That's a smart thing, but also most uh, famous bands from everywhere in the world, they have like a fan base. And if they don't have a specific fan base as bands, movements have fan bases too. Mexicans are huge fans of being fans, which is kind of like a thing. So if there's like, there's still Mexican gods and you can see them like sweating bullets and in Acapulco in places that there's really hot, they still got it up, you know, like we're like the uh, leather jackets and they're dressed in all black. So we are fans of being fans. So even if your band is not well known and doesn't have yet a fan base, there are fans of the genre that your band is uh, doing stuff in. So you can find them in Facebook and fan bases can help out a lot when traveling and making sure that the venue that you arrive in is uh, filled. So you make sure that you try to look up in advance the fan bases for most things, because I assure you, there's a highly, there's a huge chance that we are already fans of whatever it is that you do, even if we're not fans of your specific band or the bands that you have as a promoter. And the other thing is, um, it is, uh, as, uh, as Anna said, it is a huge ask uh, country. So there is a specific places that are nondescript, like the huge venues are the huge places that have like a lot of things going for them are in Guadalajara. Monterrey is another place that is, uh, has some kind of a scene. Mexico City and eventually, some new cities are like uh, adding up to that uh, a scene. The biggest scene would be Mexico City, but you just have to make sure because some places like, I don't know, Durango, they don't have as many God uh, fellas as you would like. So you have to research in advance the specific places that you're going to because some of them, I, they don't have anything else <laughs> like in Durango there's no there's not like a huge movement that's not like traditional uh, Mexican music so make mm -hmm. sure you research the places that you're going to go to and try to look up 
uh, if there are clubs and if there are venues and what is the type of stuff that they've been booking because some places are really small even though they are like a huge um, amount of uh, yeah they have like a huge radius to them the amount of people is really small compared to Mexico Defe, that it's a huge uh, city so the big venues are normally in Monterrey, Guadalajara eh, ¿cuál es, cuál me falta, Ana? Pues, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> the circuit, Querétaro. what you were mentioning, the, the circuit that is growing between Mexico City and Guadalajara includes obviously Querétaro. Um, I think uh, there have been some stuff going on in Puebla. Uh, mm -hmm. Puebla. Puebla. Sure. I mean, it's, it's huge, huge festivals we do have in Puebla. Uh, but I'm like talking about like the ground scene. And that's the thing. Um, in Mexico, we are divided in 32 states and every state received a budget from the federal government for their secretaries of culture and every secretary of culture at least runs one cultural festival and those festivals um, there are some of them that are massive like Cervantino which also uh, books from academic and classical music all the way to rock music Um, so we are talking about at least 32 cultural uh, festivals. And there are some cities where we cannot say that they have a massive or a, or a big, at least, uh, music movement, but they do have this huge festival, like the Zacatecas Festival in spring break. The, the cultural festival in Zacatecas, which is a state between Mexico City and Guadalajara, is huge. They do have budget, like they do pay like massive artists, you know, but they don't, like there's nothing else going on in Zacatecas be beside that festival, you know, outside of the spring um, period. They've got, a, they, I went there once and they had a mine with a bar at the end of this uh, mine. Yeah. Unfortunately, it was closed, but I thought it was quite an interesting <laughs> place to go for a drink. Um, yeah. um, <laughs> Jonathan, you had a question as well. Thanks very much for that. And I think it's a really good insight. Mm -hmm. It's similar in Scotland. If you're doing traditional music or you're working with artists with traditional music, they kind of operate in a parallel world and it is there's an entirely different touring circuit um which often takes in what we call art centers so there are these art centers are usually funded through tax money and they have a different a totally different budget structure so those are things that if anyone is working with, with an artist like that let us know and we can, we can introduce you to people who work in that sort of particular area you know and in mexico those festivals they do carry like all expenses traveling expenses ho like hospitality expenses they do pay good fees like it's totally different structure It was Actually, totally different. Jen Anderson is the person asked by if, if any of you encounter Jen Anderson, um, she she'll know about that because she works with she works with some traditional artists. She works with one act to do like Gaelic um, language stuff, but with combined with sort of house music. So um, yeah, if you need to know more about that, then you know give Jen a shout. Um, I'm conscious that we should really sort of wrap up the panel, but I do, I'm also realize that you've had your hand up for ages, Jonathan. So I'd wanted to invite you to uh, to say something. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to the first idea that Chuck shared. Uh, me, as a guy born and raised in Mexico City, know that our city is a huge monster with a 30 million people city. So you can find a fun base for around uh, 10k people maybe but it will be hard and it will be uh, so competitive uh, because you can uh -huh. you must face with uh, the press of huge festivals and if you're touring it will be hard to find a, an interview because all the attention of the the media will be uh -huh. on that festival so uh, don't get frustrated in your first trips to mexico because There's a lot of competitive stuff and there's a huge industry. And 
uh, but sometimes it's hard to be there. Uh, it is my advice that I'm getting, I can share uh, talking about Mexico nice. City. Um, I think the other thing with this is that that's why we, one of the reasons we hosted this. So now if you are going, you know, you've got contacts with loads of people that are able to help and the other way around for any, you know, Mexicans coming to Scotland, Wales, or, you know, the UK in general, that you now have a bunch of people that can, can help you, um, which I think is, a, you know, again, is a really important um, thing to um, emphasize. So. Um, I was going to, has anyone got a question or has anyone got anything that, you know, they wanted out? Is there anyone that needs connecting to someone or needs an introduction just now for, you know, who who's left? Um, I know some people haven't got their camera on, but I'm kind of um, imagining that's because they put on their dinner or something, but they're, you know, I think they are still in the room. So, um you know, is anyone, while you've got the opportunity, someone looking for a, you know, a label or an in-store or, a, you know, I don't know, whatever you want, this is here for you to, um, you to use to um, further your, further your creative and business interests. Hey, Olaf and Anna, um, Kayleigh here. Um, here. I'm looking to... Uh, branch out my contacts into Mexico, uh, specifically in the electronic scene, um, as I've been DJing under the name of Luna. Um, I have quite a, a dark techno underground sound, so if you have any advice like on emerging artists coming from different countries, um, just in terms of like I don't know even any shows or clubs or promoters that you think yeah. are cool. Um, there is dark, there dark is, techno. Huge. That's something I, you've taken me to somewhere where that was going on. Um, one new year, I think. As uh, so yeah, what's you know, and any anyone else for that matter working in that that particular area? I sent you my mail, Kaylee. Uh, yeah, I can help with a uh, booking for dark techno stuff in Mexico. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we, we do have that. So yeah, I, I sent you my mail already. So hit me up if uh, with a demo and, and we'll see, we'll go from there. Sweet, that sounds cool. Is there anyone else that's sort of working in that, um, in that area or is working festivals or um, clubs that is, um, that you know with that can accommodate that or where you know you're you're interested in in djs yeah even just electronic in general is yeah. super helpful um i think i also can <laughs> I, I also can help you yeah please yeah. email me yeah jonathan um, great all your info uh, all the info about your project and I'll, i can introduce you with a lot of promoter promoters and uh, club owners that's yeah. great uh, i've also, got a note of your email uh, also over here if you can send you info i work with by the um by the Camba Normal, the other three festivals in Mexico. So yeah, I think that actually for by the and Acamba will be like a really good burning point. So yeah, I will love to see your work. Yeah, cool. Definitely. I'll send you over um like some mixes and stuff like that, some details. That would be cool to hear more about, you know, what's going on in Mexico in that sense. Great. So that's see that's how easy it is. Anyone else got a you know got a request just now? Um, you know, any Mexicans got any requests for for Scotland or Wales? Anything? Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I would love to, see, uh, to hear some hip hop music that's um on Gaelic or anything. Like if you have music hip hop that's not spoken in English. I would love to hear that. So hit me up. I'm gonna like write my email so that I can showcase it on my uh, radio show. I'll send you some. Cheers. Yes, yeah, uh, Minas is gone, but he works with most 
he produces a lot of the um, Welsh rappers as well. So did you meet Minas in the first round, maybe? Um, James is, is uh, James Minas. So, you know, is, I also kind of call him Minas just because this is artist name, but it's like, you know, it's worth, if you've, if you've not got his details, I can introduce you to him. And then there is, um, there are a couple of Gaelic rappers as well. So again, that's something that, and there's Scots, another, there's, there's Scots is the other language, which is quite, it's quite um, understandable um, if you speak English. It's not like Gaelic, which is completely different. But, um, you know, there's, a, again, there's a duo, I think, that are doing that. So just remind me, Chief, and I'll, I'll get on to it. Uh, James Dodds. With, with a question or a request. Okay. Well, I would say that, like, let's do a really short break and then we've got a kind of quiz that i've um i've i spent a bit of time putting together um and we'll just divide you into teams um, but it's a kind of mexico welsh scottish themed music quiz and it's gonna take about sort of 10 or 15 minutes and um i'm sure we can think of some sort of like prize for this as well so um while we uh while we take a sort of five minute break, I'll, I'll come up with some idea for a prize and um, and then we'll we'll just basically put you all into teams and um, and get going on that. Yeah, I think Chuck's going to Chuck's going to help Olaf. Me present this. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Olaf. Yeah. It's Michael from Swiss Portrait. Just to let you know, um, I'm open to everything. So just uh, fire me an email. Anyone. <laughs> No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, just so you know, when, Martin, when he says he's open to everything, this is a man who blows stuff up. Um, so if you've not encountered him, he's um, he's also an artist. So if any of you are into making a video in Scotland which involves explosions, then um, he's your man, yeah? Um, not just a talented musician, uh, but also... Um, also a, a gifted visual explosive artist so um yes it's and he's his music's used for by an outdoor company in canada that um whenever they need a sign bed for their uh, their outdoor videos um they they turn to michael and she'll find what's the brand called again michael it's called like hook or hooky it's like h-o-o-k-e like hook but yeah, it's just funny. They just emailed me and asked me, and I was like, sure, why not? <laughs> but yeah, it's like fishing and hunting and everything. And it's, I mean, like dream pop music. So it's just quite funny to see like, like a really rugged Canadian man catching like a giant salmon. And it's like me singing <laughs> in my high pitched voice. <laughs> <laughs> So there you go. If you, need, <laughs> if you need music for a sign bed of um, someone going canoeing or shooting down a waterfall <laughs> in Mexico, then um, Michael got it. experience <laughs> providing this. Uh, so yeah, let's take five minutes and then we'll um, we'll do the quiz and then we'll pretty much be finishing on uh, finishing on time. You know, unless anyone wants to hang out for a bit afterwards. So uh, yeah, see you in see you in five minutes. Perfecto. Gracias.